Well, you're watching 3D Politics right here once again on a Monday night. Tom McKay, your amazing host, all three Davids, David Van, David Oldham, David D'Ambroso. And I've got another story here from Sooner Politics. This was a poll you did. We did. Governor Stitt's been in office for just over a year, scores performance on a 1 to 10 scale. Looks like you got an 8 was your best number. 21 people Ooh, said Eight. Well, the eight was the most common response. Oh, okay. Remote. Some scored a nine, ten. Some scored them a one. You know, and that. Yeah. But, but yeah, by and large, I mean, probably at least half of the people said eight. Maybe more okay. than half. But here's the thing: we're not done yet. I I've shared this to the uh, 3D Politics Facebook page. Please get online. We'd like to hear what you think, and then add some comments of why you gave them the score you did. You got a great response on this. A lot of people sure. chimed in on it. Mm -hmm. And eight is, you know, even if you want to conjecture a little bit about how you do your zero to ten, that's an above average score, pretty sure solidly, either way you look at it. It is. It is. And it probably would have been higher, except for. The Medicaid expansion thing, and right. then uh, he's gotten a lot of guff from the media, especially about the uh, casino ca compacts. Right. Those right. are a couple yeah. of things that uh, you know some people really have problems yeah, with. A lot of leftists don't think you should be able to renegotiate deals. I'd like the people, uh, I'd like for them to chime in and say, uh, do you think the governor can uh, renegotiate deals on the behalf of the state, or is that is that unwise? Well, and, and listen, allowed? a lot of the people taken up for the tribes are very conservative on other issues. Mm -hmm. Well, this They're is like just, the, it is weird on this issue. This is a corporate thing for them. This is a business matter hmm. for them, and they want their opinion of what the contract structure is, whether it's expired or not. You know, they're just fighting it out in court. The complexity so. with the casinos thing is similar to the complexity with abortion. The baby is a sovereign entity inside the mother, Same. which is a sovereign entity who lives in a state that is also a sovereign entity that lives in a federal government that is yes. also it's a like sovereign a entity. Very yes. messy business right here. <laughs> right. The baby is a sovereign the entity a sovereign living entity. within the state of the mother's domain. Working on a, on a thing yes. over at Constitutional Grounds to explain all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is very complicated, especially if you're a lawman. And we're working on making and simplifying it so you can understand it. Because it's it, really, once you understand it, it's really not that difficult. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a viable really fetus, you can pretty well figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another, another post here, another poll from uh, Sooner Politics. If I'm on a roll. Way to go. <laughs> if the Sooner Oklahoma, politics. if yeah. the Oklahoma Democrats somehow regained a majority in the Oklahoma House, that is, if Democrats take over the Oklahoma House, yeah. how many current Republican lawmaker, lawmakers would switch parties, which means well, how many rhinos could. are there? Okay, let, 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 let's see. <laughs> how many do you think? Uh, let's say there's going to be less than 50 of them. How many of those do you think would switch over? Well, if they were to retake the House, oh, I think probably a good 30, 35 would switch. Oh. Oh, really? <laughs> so is that half because there are about 77 Republicans in the House? Why wouldn't they just stay with their name oh, and wow. vote the way they would anyway? Well, because I think if you, if you, I think it would end up being rats from a sinking ship. And um, they're already in name only for the most part. Um, what does that mean, Oldham? That... <laughs> that I think I think the, that at that point they would see the writing on the wall. And so it's all the Democrats have to do is get that fifty-first House seat, and all of a sudden they would jump to eighty-five members, according to what you're saying. Or get close enough, maybe get to that thirty, that thirty mark or that that forty mark. Really? And and then everybody would jump. Really? I think so because I think if they start moving that direction. That I think that there would be enough of a move, they would see enough momentum going that direction oh. that that at that point they would think that it would be okay to just go ahead and make the jump. Okay. I, I, it also depends. It also depends upon the district. Okay. Because, because yeah. some of them would be remember they're they're still politicians, and right. so so it really depends upon their individual district. Okay, Dan Brosi, you've got some clients trying to run for seats 
there. What what would you say the number would be in this scenario? Well, I mean, I agree. I said half. I think there's about, and I don't know the number, but I think there's about 77 Republicans in the House. Yes. And I would say about half in either chamber would switch over, especially if leadership switched over. I mean, a lot of these guys... Well, uh, no, no. What I'm saying here is if the Democrats outright had 51... That would mean there would be 49 left in the House who would still be Republican, or 40, 50, um, 51 to 50, because there's 101. You're saying 25 of those 50 that are left would switch? Well, I guess I'd include who switched over, but yeah, no, I would say probably probably about half of the remaining Republicans would switch over. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm saying, I'm, I'm actually saying about nine or 10 that I can identify and say, you know, at their heart, that person's a Democrat. I really only think about 25% of the Republicans are actual conservatives in the Oklahoma State Legislature. What's the history of people switching back and forth like that? Do they pop over? Well, I will tell you, it happened this time, uh, Donnie, uh, or Johnny Tadlock, uh, because what happened this last election, it was the death of the rural Democrat. And Johnny Tadlock from Little Dixie, way over the, the Curtin County, just, you know, uh, yep. the Choctaw area. When he saw that the former speaker, which was um, Sean, no, uh, Copeland, Steve Copeland, okay. Steve Copeland, uh, who was from Okima, Okmulgee area, you know, okay. that, that district, you see, little kind of getting towards Little Dixie, but a rural Democrat, right. and he was defeated. Mm-hmm. And so who did the speakership go to? Emily Virgin from Norman, College Town. She's a liberal, well, she's a leftist, social leftist Democrat. And Johnny Tadlock said, you know what? I am not going to be ordered around by Emily Virgin. I'm switching. And not only now is he a Republican, he's voting very high on liberty issues, especially Second Amendment rights, a lot of your blue dogs tend to be that way. Yeah, yeah in fact, there's uh, probably two guys, three guys left that I know of in our house who are rural Democrats. Ben Loring from up in Miami. Correct. That's still a rather Democrat area. Uh, you've got um, Meredith, uh, who I think is uh, from Tahlequah. And then you've got uh, David Perryman from Chickasaw, Correct. or Chickasha. Uh, Perryman already announced he's leaving. I don't know what Ben Loring's do. He barely got reelected. Um, and then Meredith, uh, he actually voted on that gun bill. You know, Jason Lowe's trying to uh, undo constitutional yeah. uh, carry. Yeah, um, yeah. Meredith actually voted against it, actually voted with the Republicans against his fellow Democrats' right. bill. Right. So we have a lot of good 2A Democrats here, shockingly. It's just the nature of where we live. Yeah. Yeah, but there's less and less of them because they're switching to the Republicans. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, your hypothetical is interesting, but I mean, I, I, I don't think it would happen. I mean, I don't think in Oklahoma we're going to get a Democratic majority probably ever again, in part because you see, going back to our first story with Mayor Pete, Democratic Party is so out of gas. One of their front runners is the mayor of the town the size of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, that has had a 75% increase in crime. Yeah. This guy has negative accomplishments. Yeah. He has not yeah. a single accomplishment you could really point to. The Correct. guy apparently can't even put on a military uniform correctly if you look at these pictures circulating on the internet. So, um, so the Democrats just have nothing, is right. the point. Yeah. They've got an octogenarian social communist, yeah. Bernie, and then they've got this mayor of this pathetic town that's not doing as well as Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, so, which is doing very well. Yeah. So, I mean, Thurmond could be, the, the mayor of Broken Arrow would be a more viable candidate for president of the United States than anything right, the Democratic right. Party is. Yeah. So it's just, it's just not well, happening. BA was one of the fastest growing cities in America just a few years back. I mean, it was exploding. It still is. Is well, it still there? Yeah, okay, well, there you go.